At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming Scotty Brommer, and he is a guitarist. He's a composer and a healing artist. And we're going to be talking about really, you know, music as a catalyst and a portal for spiritual awakening and healing, which, you know, I've, I've always said music, uh, you know, it, it's, it goes hand in hand with spirituality and music is, you know, just a vibration that heals. So, you know, it uplifts, it could also cause destruction too. You know, it has, it has this, it, it has this power, this vibrational power. So it's a really interesting uh, topic and I'm glad you're here today with us. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, yes, this has been such an incredible journey um and, and time especially being here um we just we just performed here on saturday and it was so much so much fun um the yes music is such a powerful um um tool for tool for for healing and for for awakening so so scotty talk to me a little bit about you know uh what came first for you was it that you were always a musician and then you started to find spirituality. Did they kind of run hand in hand and parallel together? Or was it that you were this spiritually open kid or whatnot and then you started to dive into music or, you know, so how'd that happen? Exactly. This is such, such an interesting, they're very much intertwined okay. and, and they're separate and intertwined actually in the same, same, um, the same vein. So really I, I grew up in a very secular household, not spiritual at all. Um, I was drawn to music at an early age and I um, started on the guitar and uh, just loved it. Um, um, you know, being in school and everything, I, I really preferred to, to focus on music and I was always searching, kind of seeking for something more. And I, for, through some of my early influences, um, it really made me start to ask questions. I wasn't really spiritually open, I would say, as a child. But um, I went. I definitely went through a very challenging like depression phase, even like as a early like eleven year old or so. Okay. Wow. So depression hit you young. Yeah, very young. Because I was just like like really like I wanted to play music. I had this like kind of vision, dream, something, and and it wasn't being reflected to me, mm. um, and I was very confused. Um, um, and so eventually. Uh, after several years, um, when I was 16, actually, this is this is kind of I'm I'm gonna be be honest. Um, I had a um, I, I started to get into spirituality. A friend of mine had um, um, it kind of introduced me to the Ohm sign, and I and for some reason I was very drawn to it. I had okay. no idea why, um, but I started meditating. And um, so here's your friend gives you this this or it shows you the ohm sign uh -huh. and you're like okay i don't know what that is but i like it i like the symbol right and so then then it drew you into starting to do some meditations exactly and, you know that's not too common for a 16 year old right no not at all um <laughs> so yeah uh, so it brought me to kind of a, a place where i was like i've, I've kind of had enough um uh, i've had enough of of whatever it is that I'm have had enough of, you know, and I, I started meditating and I'm like, okay, I've, um, that's it. And I had something happened and I started becoming incredibly creative and out of, out of nowhere. Um, and started writing all this new music and, um, just a ton of energy was flowing through me. Wow. So you, so you opened up that channel and you started to allow that higher self and, and divine energy to come through you. Exactly. And it awakened your creative center. Yes. Okay. And so through that, all of a sudden here you are sitting there and you're like this channel for writing music and you're like, where is this stuff coming from? And things are just pouring out of you. And, you know, the only thing that had shifted was this, you know, kind of new profound experience of meditating and connecting to something else right yes and, and then suddenly everything was changing <clears throat> okay well there's there's a bit a bit more to it uh -huh. um if i can go into yeah, it yeah of course great well 
Um, so I didn't know what it was at the time, but it was kind of a profound shift. And I was, um, after I, I became incredibly creative. And then um, as time went on, it started to get very intense and fear started coming up, all kinds of subconscious things. It was basically like Pandora's box opened up and my parents had no idea what was going on. Um, so I ended up after a while um, going to a mental hospital mm -hmm. and um, was put on medication and I went completely back to sleep. Um, what it was, was it was my first Kundalini awakening after um, it was my, my first one. And so I went which, to- Which happens to people, for those that are listening, sometimes when you get an influx of energy that comes in, you know, or you, you awaken that, if there's, if you don't know how to handle it or you don't have the, you know, uh, experience that can be really overwhelming. I mean, if you, if you plug in, I don't know, a uh, hair dryer, do a 220 voltage, it's going to probably explode, right? You know, it's like, it's not quite equipped to handle that much energy coming through it at that point in time, exactly. you know, like, and so there's these, you know, fuse boxes that decipher the energy that comes in and then filtrate it out to different outlets, you know, um, so that your appliances can actually take in the energy. And if you think about it like that, I mean, you know, the, the universe is a big ball of energy and then diffusing down. But, you know, like, so for those that are listening, that can often happen to somebody. And so it's not that you're going crazy. It's not that you belong in a mental institute and belong to be, you know, uh, drugged or whatnot because people don't understand it because it's not as common. It could just be like you have a... Uh, uh, 47 cords of your kundalini energy, you know, seven within each of your seven chakras and, um, or, or maybe there's more than that, whatever. But anyways, there's all of these little cords and, but you can have any one of those become an open channel at any different period of time and have what is, feels like a manic episode. Exactly, right? exactly. And so for the outward eye, it seems like, whoa, they went crazy. You know, they're just like this euphoric ball of energy. They don't want to sleep. There's so much going on. There's so much, you know, whatever. <laughs> and it's like, oh, and the, often a lot of wisdom is coming in at that point. So often it sounds like you're talking crazy to a lot of people right. that don't have the same belief systems. And so it's happened to people before. <laughs> exactly. I know I'm not the first one, although I, at the time I was but the only you, one that I was aware yeah. of. Yeah. No, and, so and, and you was, didn't know what the heck. Did, was I going crazy? You know, my parents aren't understanding. I'm like having this complete shift and paradigm shift of reality <laughs> happening, you know? So, you know. Yeah. So, um, exactly. Exactly. Thank you for, for that. That's exactly, exactly right. So, um, so yeah. So, I basically, I, I went back to sleep, though, for for. 12 years, I could say, and then I, through really a divine set of circumstances, I had another one, um, and that's and I that's when I realized, you know, what I had what I had happened before the first time. And so, what was very interesting is um, through this process, I started to realize some really interesting gifts. Um, and one of them was I could when I centered myself and was able to meditate and had energy flowing properly. I realized basically what I had always been searching for, like within myself, that you know caused the depression in, in, the, in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. That I was, I knew I was searching for something, and I realized, oh, it's I can play a single note and it can feel blissful and yeah, incredible, and that's really what what other artists, the ones that I love the most, they did that for me, and I realized I can, I have that potential mm -hmm. to share something in that way and it was very exciting to kind of blend spirituality and music and start to start to really learn like wisdom through music and life um kind of all in one and okay. kind of and kind of seeing back and forth how how it works i've been very very interested in improvisation that's kind of like one of my big big things i love improvisation um so like how do you improvise you know like how do you well it's, you know, this is, this conversation is, is an improvisation as well. You know, yeah. we didn't plan it. Yeah. We have, we know what we're, we have a general direction of what we're going to talk about and it's kind of unfolding. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in the flow, so improvisation is very much, much the same. And I've, and I've kind of found how they, they go together. Yeah. Um, 
Awesome. And so when you had your second Uh uh, Kundalini awakening, uh, how did you cope with that? And what what did you do differently? You know, because at that point, you know, 12 years older, you know, you were an adult, you weren't under the, the, the household of your parents. You also said, hey, I've been here before, but how, how did you handle that? Well, um, it, was, it was very similar to the first one. It was a lot of energy, a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I did go to my parents and they were like, oh, we should you know, take you back. And I was like, no, this time I, I realized what's going on. And I actually, I had a book on Kundalini and it's, I, was, you know, I did my research and I uh, like dog-eared all these pages and everything and I could, and I could explain to them what was happening. And um, I, I decided I'm going to take a different route and, I'm, and I found Ayurveda and I found yoga and I found um, some healers that I started working with. Um, and this was like five years ago. Um, and I just took this, this other route and I basically said, I'm, I'm going to go through it this time. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm going to, you know, face, face whatever is meant for me because I know I know now I really I remember who I am now like I like I look at the mirror and I'm seeing like I realize it it's the strangest thing it's like I forgot myself I'm like I'm, oh my gosh I remember myself it reminds me of you know the movie Hook um the, 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 the pirate movie uh, yeah okay <laughs> the scene where he's like oh it's really you Peter I don't know that just came that comes to me yeah um, like oh it's like I recognize myself for the first yeah. time almost Strange. And so, so you had to do some, you had to do some work and really look at, at things and then also create a new type of uh, practice for yourself. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. Like a healthy practice to kind of get you through and to manage and assimilate the energy and also look at whatever maybe blocks or resistance that might be causing a little bit more disruption in your energy. Field, Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So it brought me into, you know, non-duality and it brought me in you know to really center myself and is the self and it brought me to shadow work and all these different modalities and working with other healers and um i learned i've learned so much it's just been it's been very interesting and well it's beautiful and then as a result of that uh you had an awakening where you could hear music and chords in a different way and so you could hear how they felt on the energetic realm. Is, is that kind of what you're saying? You yeah. Could, you, and then you were like, wait, this is having this effect on me. Yes, exactly. I could kind of feel um, different different sounds in like different ways um, um, and kind of almost like transmute certain like darker feelings into into light almost. So I kind of started to like play with, play with it a bit and kind of use music to kind of work on. I'm still, I'm still, it's, I feel like it's going to be a lifelong process, but I'm, you know, kind of like discovering how, like my own ways of, of, yeah, basically feeling notes, you know, feeling chords, um, kind of even seeing them like in colors or, you know, and, and, um, oh, so you're having kind of some synesthesia. Synesthesia, exactly. Yeah. I've kind of always had, had that to a certain degree, but, um, now it's more vivid. It's more vivid. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. And, and from there, then you realize, okay, hold on. Music can have this effect on others. And this is the effect that it was having on me. So did you start to shift maybe how you played certain music? Did you, what, what was your next step from there? Well... Did you write different types of songs? Did you start a band? Did you like, like, I mean, where, where, where was it? Okay. Like you had this and then yeah. like, and it's like, because now you're looking at things differently. Did you go back and fix some of the songs that you've already wrote to like have more of an effect? Like, I mean, where, where, well, where do you go from well, that? Well, this is, this is kind of how it happened. I, I've always been, um, you know, since I graduated, I went to school for music. Um, I went to USC and, and since then, um, I really, um, played a lot of gigs kind of as a sideman and different performances and, and things. Um, but this, when this happened five, like five years ago, I started to like, you know, this was an, kind of another part of the journey. Mm-hmm. But then when in 2020, when everything shut down, I had a lot of time to kind of really go inward and kind of cultivate this some more. So um, what I did was I, there were no real 
gigs happening, of course. So um, I, I bought a MIDI keyboard and I'm like, all right, I'm going to create a new project. I can, I can improvise. I can still play. I can create my own chords and, and things um, and improvise on top of it. So I kind of created this electronic project and um, I called it Bodhisattva um, because of, of a conversation I had with my Ayurvedic practitioner and he kind of inspired that. And um, I basically, I started using this meditation idea to learn music um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I transferred that into basically chan starting to channel ideas for music. Yeah. So I had some ideas come through and I basically trans just transferred it in the moment to GarageBand. I was using GarageBand at the time. Okay. And started to, yeah, music started to flow through that way. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, so um, that and then I would improvise on top of it and um, now looking to, to bring that out and, and kind of arrange that music for live groups and for audiences and be able to mm -hmm. share it that way. Mm -hmm. So that's kind and, of... And so uh, people started to hear mm -hmm. the music that you composed and, and put and, and, and wrote and created on GarageBand. And were you kind of seeing what effects did this have on people? Was it having different types of, you know, were you kind of asking people like what they felt with it and stuff like that? Were you noticing or was it just like you observing with some of the visual gifts that you're given, you know? Well, um, I'd say it was more, more, I guess my own, my own, um, my own uh, experience at the time. Um, okay. I didn't really ask, but that's a good idea. I should ask. Uh, that's a, that would be a great idea just to ask if there was any effect that was any different or if it started to have that. Yeah. But um, I think the idea is, is definitely to use that energy to, to you know, kind of shift the, shift something that's going on in, in you know, mm -hmm. or to, because yeah, that's what music does. You know, it can change, change somebody's mood in a second. Um, it can mm -hmm. Which I think anybody that's listening here, you've had that experience. Somebody put, puts a song on the radio and in a moment you're pulled back to a different time and a place with a certain memory. Sometimes it's joyous. Sometimes it's sadness. Sometimes it's, you know, nostalgic and whatever that is. But music will transport us. And through that transporting system, it will activate different emotions exactly you know exactly and sometimes you know you want to you, you, you're feeling tired and low and you need to study or do something you crank or you're about to work out and you don't feel like that motivation you turn on like ah something that gets you going it's the eye of the tiger it's you know or whatever you know but you, exactly. you get pumped right exactly you know but it's like the music can pump you up the music can bring you down you can hear a certain music and suddenly you're like ah you know, some binaural beats or sound bowl in the background. And suddenly you're like, I don't know why I was so stressed before, but I just feel like I just smoked some weed. <laughs> but it was just that sound bowl, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it happens. Exactly, literally. And so, and so, so what, is it, what is your ultimate, like, you know, maybe you haven't thought about your ultimate goal, but what are your next steps in, 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 in your goal for where you want to take your healing artistry? Well... Um, as I develop it, I would like to at some point share it with others and kind of be able to teach it. Um, uh -huh. I think right now um, a big part of my focus is um, kind of connecting with other people and um, creating uh, just events, community things where I where we can play and kind of just talk and have an open conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, really, I'm, I'm I recorded some um, some live videos in the studio, and so I'm going to share those very soon. Um, but and when you perform live, there's a lot of different artists that are performing with you, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so you want to talk about that and how that experience is? Oh, in terms of, yeah, sure. Some um, of your live performances too. And yeah. Yeah. The live performances, there's, there's so much fun. Um, so I've, you know, we've taken some of this music and we're, um, and, and part of it, and you mentioned this before, actually, um, there's different different kinds. There's kinds that pump you up, and there's kinds that are more introspective. And I think part of what I'm, sh you know, sharing is that all of it is good. All of it is valid, and is, mm -hmm. it's all it's all part of it. Um, but yes, um, so kind of taking all these different styles, putting them together, and um, performing with these these groups. Um, 
it's it's a blast. So we're so get to explore this this brand new music and improvise on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's I love that. It's it's definitely a joy, and there's there's actually a lot, quite a bit more that I'm looking to to create as well. So oh, that's there's great. There's some in the in the back back burner. So if somebody <clears> comes <throat> to um, a live performance that that you're doing, maybe like one that we're hosting here, uh, what can what can they expect? Um, they can expect um, connection with the with the artist and with the music and. Um, they can expect some definite, um, well, some good sounds for sure, some good, some good vibes, and um, just to have like a really, really great and meaningful time. Um, that's really what I, what my intention is to, to put on something that will have people go within and really see themselves. That's you know, because that's what music did for me. That's mm -hmm. what art, like my favorite artists, did for me from all, all different genres. My, I really sincerely want would love for ha to have somebody feel that and yeah. be like, oh, this is, this is an opening to who I am. This is, I'm, I'm inspired now to do something yeah. creative or something to inspire somebody else. That's, I would love that, you know, that's. That's great. So, you know, it's a, it's different than your standard, you know, music event, right? You would say, cause you know, it's all about the whole intention behind it is cultivating that that meaning, that inner reflection, that uh, mirrored type of experience to say, here you are, and have that collaboration with a whole bunch of different artists that, you know, you, you know, do, do you play with those artists and practice beforehand or is it just kind of like everybody just improvs together? A little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> so with, with a lot of jazz gigs, you know, a lot of them we, Get together and just play standard tunes, you know, for the first time. We, we've a lot of times we don't even know each other, you know, yeah. for for regular gigs. So something like this is more of a, of a performance. So we do a rehearsal. Okay. Um, but it is, um, but it's there's still it's mostly improvised. So mm -hmm. the, there's there's compositions, um, and then there are sections for improvisation. So it's it's a little bit of both. I'd okay. Say. Yeah. So it's collaborative. I mean, it's like you know, it's this. In between, so not never is any show going to be the same. No show is going to be the same. No. Yeah. Okay. Every show is going to be completely different. You're, I mean, it's exciting also, and it's never going to be 100% perfect, and which is also kind of I think an important thing. <laughs> well, the first time you you, you guys played here, I would, all of our lights went off, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like I don't know, they were doing some electrical work in the inside, and somehow they screwed up the electrical on the outside, and hey. and, and but you know, improv you did, and we brought out all the lights from the different treatment rooms and. You know, just worked with it, and you guys made it happen. That's what it's about. And an extension cord going to an outlet way over there somewhere, and you know, made it work. <laughs> that's that's what it's about. It's just living living life in that flow, and whatever's you know, it's gonna come up. It's and, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work with it, and and. But it's it's, it, yeah. it's so important, you know, because there's things that will always come up, and it's how you deal with it. It can either ruin your night and can be like, oh no, you know, this sucks. Now we can't work, we can't work through it, or this is horrible, or, you know, this venue's horrible, or whatever the case may be. And, you know, then you go and you walk her out and, you know, your self-fulfilling prophecy is that. And, you know, where you say, okay, I'm committed to a good show. And you figure it out and, you know, maybe that was even better having the lights and the ambiance and the, you know, like it just, you know, there was something magical about it. And it was, and exactly, that's exactly what happened. And I, I preferred it. It was, in a sense, it was, it was like this magical ambiance. It was, yeah. it was so fun. <laughs> no lights from any other source. So we had to do our best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, I was joking with, with Ellie, actually, on the last one. I was like, yeah, I, you know, can we, can we just turn off all the lights and get all those lamps out there? And she's <laughs> yeah. like, really? No, I'm just kidding. But, but yeah, that was, it was so cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so you're going to be doing a show with us once a month. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so where can people, where can people find you if they're interested in learning more about, you know, kind of this new way of the way that I would say, like almost like your own genre, your own type of like way of relating to music, maybe figuring out how to connect with you, share, inspire, collaborate, what all of that beautiful stuff. Absolutely. Um, I'm totally open to all that. Um, 
Well, I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram uh, at Scotty Bramer. Um, on Facebook at um, Scotty Bramer as well. Um, also, uh, Bodhisattva Music on on Facebook and um, also on YouTube. Um, you can just type in my name. Um, so pretty much every platform. Pretty, pretty much every platform. Yes, okay. exactly. Awesome. Yeah. We'll, we'll put links down below and uh, and make sure. But I always like to have them. Um, said out loud because for those people that are listening which tend to be more people listening right now but we got to get more of you on our visual too i mean you can still listen i get it it's convenient you can be on the gym hiking up the mountain in the car so by all means don't stop listening to us on audio but you know we, we we're kind of cute you should come over and check us out on the visual platform too on, on youtube <laughs> yeah it's it's a great <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, it. is there anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up um well um i'd say follow your dreams i mean follow you know listen to music like i i really hope to inspire others to to follow their their calling um and you know to really go within and, and find discover what that is um and yeah I'm, I'm happy to collaborate i'm happy to to perform anything so I'm, I'm really really appreciative of liberate you guys have helped me a ton um in a lot of different ways and i'm like super grateful to be here i'm, I'm so i really appreciate it thank you thank you and thank you yeah. for being here oh my pleasure i'm excited to see where your journey goes um, please everybody like, subscribe, comment, you know, you know how it goes. Everybody always says this to you, but it's about you actually taking those steps, press a little button right there and making it happen. So other people can find this content too, because if you sat here and listen until the end, that means you liked it. So do me a favor and <laughs> like, and comment it. It'll take two extra seconds, but it'll help the algorithm gods do their job. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and until you. next time. Have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, U R S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.